Day 14. Arena's analysis of the whale fall shows evidence of toxins from a harmful algal bloom. We have to find Andrea and her family and get bio samples. On a positive note, Andrea's side trip was a success. He found an amazing group of teens who have been nurturing the turtle population back to health. Running out of dive time. Especially if I go home early. Ready to dive. I'm in and okay. This area looks so different at night. I used to love diving in the moonlight. The pod was active in this area as recently as an hour ago. When was the last tracking data for the baby or its mother? Days ago. But they could be with the pod right now and just not making any noise. First waypoint. They'll load automatically from here on in. I have the Explorer drones patrolling to get as many eyes and ears looking for the pod as possible. Do I need the buoys? No, we'll use the hydrophones on the drones. They don't have the range or fidelity of the buoys, but we need speed. Thanks. Mariah, you know that no chatter rule was just for the vent area, right? I'm sorry? I think he's pointing out that you seem distracted. Sorry. I'm back. Talk to me about something positive, Andre. Were you able to make contact with the teenagers you were telling me about? They've been helping the leatherback turtle population we found here in the region. They've developed a net... ...nest cooling technology to help the baby turtles. They've also built their own tracking drones. Teens with tech. Sounds like you've inspired some citizen scientists, Andre.
have the lab ready to start work on the samples when you're done with your dive. How quickly will you get results? We can do initial screens quickly to narrow things down. Have you decided whether or not you want another dive back at the Brian Pool? With everything going on, I really hadn't had the chance to look at the schedule, but I would always say yes to that. Right. I found the underweight orca. If you can easily collect a sample, we might as well screen him for toxins and pathogens. I don't remember having dolphins in the dive objectives. I added them because of their role in the disease that hit the dolphin population a few years back. Done. Andre, have you picked up any tags from our pod? No, not yet. I'm gonna widen the radius for the explorer. hear a humpback singing, but I don't see it. I think I'm losing it. It's gotta be close. I feel like it's singing right in my ear. Try a scan visor. That's totally weird. I see a scan dot, but nothing's there. I think the humpback is invisible. Sorry. I'm afraid I'm the invisible whale. I'm definitely losing it. I thought you just said you're an invisible whale. Wow, not me. The humpback song I generated. It's pretty small, boy, but in the dark you probably can't see the line. Oh, it must be pretty authentic. At least enough to convince your drone. Mirai, have you heard back from Ren yet? No. Is Ren okay? Mirai, are you there? I'm not sure. Pardon? I meant about Ren. I don't know. We had a fight right before I left the sub. Seriously? Here? Well, I have to watch your video feed for safety, but I can mute your audio track for privacy. Wow, I've never talked to her while I was diving. No, I'll wait for the sub.
Okay, Mariah, you're on. The drone on the out of patrol just picked up several sperm whales on visual. Thanks. No sound alerts at all. They're being awfully quiet. I think I found the pod. Yes, that is them. I don't see the baby, but it's a little dark. Why aren't they moving? They're sleeping. I had no idea. They look alien, but beautiful. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna mute my comm while I get the samples. I don't think they can hear us through your visor. I think she is the one that is needing some quiet. Thanks, Arena. Catch you at the sub. Mariah out. I study things that are beyond their wildest imaginations and that I see things that are brand new to science and to people and to humanity every day. I'm at home in these kinds of environments. It's funny, I, I'm more comfortable here than I probably am on the outside. It wasn't just that I was meant to be out on ships. I was supposed to be in the bottom. I was supposed to be in the deep water. I was supposed to be doing those things that nobody had ever done before. It completes who I am. Being a deep sea scientist, it does require sacrifice. I mean, we're away from our families for weeks on end, sometimes months on end. It's a constant struggle because you miss parts of your kid's life. My oldest daughter was about to turn three when the oil spill happened in 2010. I was to see a lot. So between 27 months and 36 months, I was gone probably more than I was there. When I came home after a five week stint in the Gulf, she came running up to me in the airport. 
she had transitioned from a toddler to a little girl. And the little girl was gone. And there was this other person there. And you don't ever get that back. It was a decision. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna miss transformations. I'm gonna miss really important things. Is it worth it? I had talked to her class about the ocean and one of her friends said something to her and she responded, you know, my mommy, she's the ocean doctor. The ocean is sick and she's trying to make it better. She couldn't even say important. She's like, it's really important. But she understands that it's an important job. Every time before I leave, I say, my most important job on this planet is being your mother. But this is part of me too. Hello, Mirai. It's me. I don't see a sample from either the baby or the mother. Andre said you were going back out to look for them. I know you are still deciding, but I told him you are thinking about leaving the expedition early. As soon as I have results, I'll let you know. Mirai, I think I have a location for the mother and baby. They were spotted just outside the research zone by those teenagers I was telling you about. I don't have much data, but the report doesn't sound positive. I'll let Irina know as well. Hello? Were you asleep? It's the middle of the day. Why does that matter? Did the doctor say anything other than Nana missed the window? Not really. Did you ask him the questions I said? Didn't seem to be any point. Listen, I'm exhausted. I'll catch you later, okay? Bren, please don't hang up. Bren? <sighs> okay.
same night, last dive. We're near the coastal area where Andrea and her mother were last spotted. Suit checked and rechecked. Can't risk any exposure in case the bloom hasn't completely resolved. Hard to swim after absorbing neurotoxin. Seriously. Diving now. I'm in. Right. Are you sure you want to do this dive? I'm okay. And you're sure you want to record in our streaming format? Yes. Ready? Recording now. Tonight we're recording from the open ocean in the Western Pacific. For those of you who are returning, we're trying to get an updated status on the mother and baby sperm whale that we've been following on our stream. We're recording tonight's stream because we have reports that the mother whale is distressed. And we don't want to surprise viewers if these reports are true. After discovering a whale fall in our research zone, we suspected that the whales may have been exposed to a toxin or pathogen and are currently investigating. Samples from several females in the pod tested positive for a toxin that we believe resulted from exposure to a harmful algal bloom near the coastal area just outside our research zone. As I approach the whales, I'm going to turn off my mic, but keep on my video feed. <gasps> no. Whales that we tested showed low level of this toxin, so we do not believe they will suffer from long-term effects. However, we expect that the mother whale was exposed to a higher level and was also more vulnerable because of her pregnancy. Stay close to your aunties. They know the way.
As far as we know, those were the only two whales affected by the bloom. With all of Andrea's technology genius, he still hasn't invented a way to be in two places at the same time. Before my flight home landed, Irina and Andre had already confirmed the location of the harmful bloom. I stayed close to home with Nana until she passed the next year. Ren moved in with me to save money while she finished school, which was great. <laughs> Mostly. It was Ren's idea to keep the live stream going remotely using one of Andre's drones. But it was my fabulous idea to have Ren join the stream to choose the questions from the audience. She is definitely a hit. I can't lie. It's great to be diving again. While I was away, the baby became an auntie. I think she likes it. She still buzzes me when I play my coda sounds, so that is still a mystery. But I swear, we understand each other completely.
we're burdened from a time when we thought the ocean was too big to fail. You can't take anything for granted, even though the ocean is so big, it is sensitive. The oceans are the kidneys of the earth. They recycle material and, and filter it out. Most people don't know that, they're not aware. They see the ocean as a sewer that they can dump anything into and it's out of sight, out of mind. Nothing is out of sight, out of mind on this planet. Everything is connected. We are absolutely in this mix of biogeochemistry and our role so far has been consumptive and destructive. If we are to continue to have a planet that works, we have to heal the harm we've caused. What's the worst case scenario if we deny that the climate is changing, but actually it is, and we do nothing? Then billions of people's lives will be directly affected just by sea level rise alone, let alone the other effects of climate change. So it's not about who's right, it's about the consequences of being wrong in the decision that we make right now. Educating everybody from school children, fishermen, tourists. If we can manage to do that, we have a very good future and we can gain a lot from the ocean. If we could establish the foundation for interspecies communication, we can make first contact. And that's where I hope the future goes. Because what we really want is curious, conscientious, and a self-correcting population. You changing can affect all the people around you to walk instead of drive, to buy a hybrid, to ride a bicycle, to not use single-use plastic. Imagine if everybody did that. The effect would be tremendous. We do have the power of choice about what we eat, what we wear, how we travel, all the things that we do in an everyday way times seven billion will make all the difference in the world. We must protect the ocean as if our lives depend on it, because they do. No one has dived to a thousand meters in Antarctica. My dip, one thousand meters on bottom, over. As a scientist, I could tell you, we discover something new every time we go out. That's been my drive, to discover things, to uncover mysteries that we can then solve. We're on a new frontier of ocean exploration that will bring out the explorer in all of us. We're partnering with the Ocean X Initiative to build a mind-blowing platform for exploration, a research vessel that's a one-of-a-kind ocean conservation and media platform to explore the world's oceans in ways that were never before possible, to create one big wave for the oceans. I think it's really exciting. There's still a massive part of this planet we know nothing about. We need to make people understand what we do in the next 10 years is going to determine what the ocean looks like in 200 years' time. Audiences glued to Blue Planet 2 have been starkly reminded of the problems of plastics pollution. Fifty years ago, Jacques Cousteau and the Calypso managed to capture our imagination. Somehow we lost that moment. We have to get back that personal connection to the sea. The greatest era of exploration is still ahead of us. Exploring the ocean can help provide a piece to the big puzzle.